Mr. President, it's an yeah. honor to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time. It has been almost a year since your inauguration. Have you faced anything that you were not expecting when you took office? Uh, I've been a politician for almost 40 years, excluding the term now. So I would say that uh, on the national front, uh, I was kept uh, informed all the time uh, by the news and, of course, uh, by uh, uh, sources in government. Uh, expected, uh, but I never realized the magnitude of the contamination of the Filipinos uh, insofar as drugs uh, are concerned. Do we hear that four it, million people? Yeah, right? it used to be just a problem there. Problem. I thought that it was just uh, like uh, like Davao. I, I may have one case now, then probably two. But it was a very constant uh, happening every time. When I became president and everything was available to me for information, I was almost appalled to know that we have reached the, 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 the millions of uh, contaminated. Uh, so when I was mayor, as I said, I said, uh, do not destroy my city. And do not destroy the young people of Davao City because they are our assets. We are not rich. Most of us are poor. And we depend on our sons and daughters to feed us when we get out. We do not have, uh, we are not the rich people. We do not have any housing here for uh, few in between. And we need our children to buy the medicines, pay the hospitals, pay our burial, and uh, do not corrupt them with, with drugs. Do not destroy their minds. And I said, because I will kill you. And I've been very clear with that. Do not destroy my country. Do not destroy our young people. Because if you do that, I will kill you. There are so many criminals walking around. Stop it, and I said. I am not a wholesale violator of human rights. I am not the police. I just give orders. But I build a country. But anything that would destroy my country is totally unacceptable to me. My orders were very clear. Go out and hunt for them, the drug lords. Arrest them if it's still possible. But if they are confronted with the violence that would place your life, the policemen or uh, the security officers are in danger, so they kill them. Because uh, in the past, that was what really prevented policemen and uh, the military from doing it. Why? Because of they were so afraid of this human rights thing, which is a new phenomenon. It's actually the human rights in the guise of human rights Countries like EU and America are interfering into the affairs of other nations in the guise of uh, human rights. The bitter irony is that while trying to protect civilians, to protect the youth, um, you sometimes, and you admitted that in one of your interviews, that innocent civilians could have become victims. Do you think it is a fair price to pay? Just like in the Americans, when they drop a bomb there, so much, so powerful that it also kills other civilians. But you are not America. Uh, do you, do yeah, you feel yeah, sorry yeah, for, but, do you feel sorry? But we are sorry? talking of human liability. So it doesn't say that because there are Americans that are exempted. And that's because I am just a small uh, time uh, government official. I am not exempted. Because so what's the fairness there? No. When they drop bombs, they kill so many villages, and there's not even a whimper. America invaded Iraq. What was the excuse? That there were weapons of mass destruction. And yet when they invaded Iraq, so many people were killed. So where is justice now? So I think it's really hard to avoid civilian. It's meaning to say justice has to be equal. It cannot be a justice for one 
and justice for another set of standards for two. It has to be equal. Is that the reason why you turn away from America? Yes, because they refuse to understand my predicament when they knew that they were also in the same predicament on a larger scale. I never in America what? Remember Panama? Okay. They invaded Panama, a sovereign state. Okay, in Central America. So what was the purpose there? They went inside, seized the country, arrested the president, brought him outside uh, the country, placed him in a detention cell in New York. He faced a trial federal court and is convicted. What happened to the invasion? And what was the reason? Drugs. You invade a country. Me, I'm just fighting the criminals in my country. I never invaded a country. Uh, you have to look at it this way. There is so much incongruity in the principles that are being followed by nations. The powerful ones, they can invent this weapon of mass destruction. Oh, we can invade your country. Me, I never touch anybody. I do not even go to the United States. And then they criticize me for the criminals that I have killed. Your relations with the previous U.S. administration were far from perfect. Will you give uh, Trump's administration a chance? I think that Trump is he's very good. He's a regular guy. He's pragmatic, very practical. Uh, the previous uh, administration uh, was a source of irritation and a uh, source of so many conflicts, uh, not really in terms of war, but in terms of uh, relationships. Uh, the other uh, administration destroyed all of this, the goodwill and even uh, relationships with Russia and relationships with the Philippines. And uh, it's not an easy job to be just, uh, when there's a new guy on, on, in town, you just say everything is forgotten. They have, uh, they, they have the Congress that is not uh, in full accord with uh, the U.S. president. And they are, they are, uh, at the city, they're still fighting right now, uh, threatening even to impeach uh, President Trump. Uh, America is a hard act to follow. You, you, sometimes you are in good terms. For example, Trump, he says that he, he, he agrees with me. And uh, he thinks that I'm doing uh, it the right way. And even he, about uh, two weeks ago, announced that he's going to get tough against the, the, the drug, uh, drug lords and everybody uh, who is into drugs. You could almost find the similar uh, words between my mouth and Trump's mouth. But you know, uh, those things that we ordered and those things that uh, we expect to be delivered is being hampered because it is equally, the powers of the president is subject also to the checks and balances of Congress. And sometimes he is paralyzed. He himself now even finds himself maybe not really in big trouble, but in trouble. I have nothing against America. We're perfectly all right. Trump is my friend. But my foreign policy has shifted from what of that pro-Western. I now uh, have this working alliance with China, and I hope to establish a good working relations with Russia. Why? Because Western world EU and everything, they have this double talk. Do you think your society will support this idea because there are intensive ties within the society with America historically? Do you think you will have support of the people? If there is anything to gripe for, it is me griping for. Why did you invade my country 50 years ago? sat on this land and live over the fat of the land. 
And you expect me to be happy? You are so angry. I can feel it. Yeah. You treat me as if I am your colony still? <laughs> you must be kidding. Why would I allow it? Why would I allow you to treat me as if I am your uh, uh, representative here as a colonial governor? We are an independent country. Uh, we will uh, survive. We will endure. We can go hungry. But this time, I want my country treated with dignity. So you uh, once said that you don't want America in your country. So you were serious. Yes, I said no. I said uh, American troops. That one day during my term, I'm, uh, if I survive the CIA, <laughs> oh no. If you, I survive the CIA, I have stayed five you years. You talk a lot about assassination. Do you really expect that to happen? They do it. Does you, it surprise you? Are you worried? Uh, they can are you afraid of, of your them. life? They can even uh, pluck the president out of his country and face, uh, force him to face trial in another country. What should happen so that it improves? Are you, are you, uh, waiting, said, are you waiting for an apology? Let's say, no, will it no, work? No, no, no. That's not. Uh, I, I, I don't want that thing to happen. So what may, uh, what it's, may a, help? it's enough that uh, I respect Trump. He's a friend, and he is uh, welcome to come here on, on November. But if I'm talking about arms, if I'm talking about mutual uh, defense uh, regarding. I says, uh, I'd rather, in my preliminary talks with uh, President Putin, I got a favorable response. I hope uh, we can uh, convert it to something substantial. Because it is only Russia and China who can be relied with their words. America is double talk. Yeah, the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. Because uh, I said the arms are suspended, and the Senate has not really agreed, or they're still debating on it, whether to give us the arms or not. My country is fighting terrorism. How long can I wait? Until such time that we are on bended knees? It might be too late. For after all, if I do not act now, and so with the drug problem, if my country collapses, who will bring it back? The United States? Russia sells arms. He does not impose the, she does not did, impose any condition. When Russia sells the arms, he sells the arms. You need it, I will give it to you. That's a known fact. You do not attach conditions a straight negotiation, if you're ready to help, we'll say, okay, we'll help, we'll give you this. And can you do that with America? No. Because the president says he will give you, and the State Department said no. And then his Congress, we said, oh, no, he's a human rights violator, so we, we keep a, a distance. And then if that is the case, so be it. I will not hunker for it on bended knees. I will not ask uh, uh, for mercy for that alone. Welcome back. We can now bring you the second part of our exclusive interview with, with the Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte, in which he touches upon some of the security issues facing the world at present, and also gives a personal account of the abuse he suffered as a child. You just came back from China. Yes. Your relations with China are a little bit warmer than compared to your predecessor and actually warmer than it was expected. Yes. We didn't see you riding to the islands in the China South Sea with Filipino flag to put it there um, as was promised. Is that uh, just tactic or you changed the strategy? Yeah. Oh. When it is so ridiculous, it must be a joke. I, I'm fond of using jokes here, that I brought that practice also nationwide. That's why I would ride on a jet ski. Why would I ride on a jet ski? I would ride on a boat of the Navy if I want to go there. 
What's a, imagine the riding uh, with a gun at your uh, 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 pinned in the, under your armpit and uh, you ride the motor there. But you didn't go there on a boat either. You, instead, you went to China. I was about to go there, but China said, can you please avoid it at this time? Because it might get the wrong, it might give the wrong impression and uh, every head of state who's claiming that the uh, vast sea there as uh, theirs would also go there. And out of respect of my uh, friendship with China, I said, okay. So but that thing about uh, <clears throat> forget it, do not okay. erase it from your mind. It's all joke. I said, if I go there as president, I will ride on a Navy. I understand. Of course, it was a joke, but um, it showed what kind of policy you are going to conduct towards China, and people expected some tough policy. Do you expect me to fight China in a war? Do I have the cruise missiles to hit them? Do I have the missiles to launch from the from this? Uh... So what will happen? It's going to be a massacre. Never mind about the insistence of the arbitrary. At the end of the day, it is this. It is say, you say it is yours, and I say it is mine. And okay, the, and then he would, uh, the other guy at the bargaining table would say, okay, it is yours. And so, what now? Do I look stupid? We can talk about it later on, but not now, because everybody's grabbing a piece of the property. Maybe when the time comes when everything is quiet and it's conducive to talks. And they said that they mentioned about joint venture and mm -hmm. but not now. No hard, no hard sell now. I realized that, uh, and because sometimes of the high-handedness of America in treating its, uh, its friends as if we are not friends. So I decided that uh, I will craft an independent foreign policy that would allow me to interact with China and the rest of the world and in Europe to reach out for new markets. The problem now is uh, events just like any other places, especially in the Middle East. The radicalism, the extremism has overtaken us. Just like in the Middle East, it used to be uh, a problem of uh, Iraq, and the United States went there to declare war for no reason at all, except the weapons of mass destruction we were there, then uh, undermined Libya and you have this problem now. So, and uh, the usual uh, entities of talking about peace has been overtaken by the extremism now prevailing in the world. Same thing here. Uh, the ISIS has established uh, a base in my country, in down south, and uh, we are fighting terrorism, just like any country. You know. And we need the arms. And suddenly, two senators of the U.S. Congress said that they will not uh, proceed with the exportation of selling the firearms. And I said, no problem. I can always go to uh, China, to Russia, to plead my case. And I said, you would understand, because they are also suffering from uh, terrorism. They are talking of a worldwide problem. Why can't Trump just be open and just to tell his counterpart, President Putin, that, hey, guys, we have the same problem, so what's your strategy there? How could it affect your national security, by the way? Tell me. So what about ISIS? Do you think ISIS militants here in the Philippines, they are homegrown or they were kind of imported? Uh, there are so many Caucasians looking. Mm -hmm. uh, we have captured or killed about six already. And they are uh, from the Middle East mostly. Mm -hmm. OK. And how, how are you going to fight the terrorists in this task that so many countries actually fail to deal with? Well, uh, not really fail, but uh, put it under control. Mm -hmm. It's a 
it's a state of the mind which uh, cannot be erased easily. In every generation, there is always a serious problem to solve. And so you have to be serious about it. And sometimes, not go beyond, but in excess of what is really called for. Because you want an assurance that your country is safe. If we have to kill an extra guy to make it more safer, then do it. My God, do it. And if it if they did 100 more killed and uh, 100 more safer, if you are a leader and you don't know how to serve it, you must be. Mm -hmm. uh, you do not deserve. I should not be serving. Uh, maybe what I can really say is that I do not need the presidency at this time of my life. I'm 72 years old. As president, I have to preserve and defend the Filipino nation. And I will exactly do it, whatever be the price, whatever be the cost. It's my solemn duty to see to it that my country is really what it should be, a peaceful and comfortable place to live in. Can I ask you a personal question? Please? Yes. Uh, two years ago, you shocked the media, re relieving, revealing that um, you had been molested by a priest when you were 14 or 15 years old. And then later, you even identified that priest. Um, yes. He was an American yes, national. Correct. Not you, only I, the whole class. Two generations up and two generations down. All of us. You were 70 years old at that time. Mm -hmm. Why would you make that confession like more than 50 years later? The abuses of the priest are being uh, filmed everywhere. It, it, there was an Italian underground film, and I am sorry you saw that uh, priest running naked over there. And, 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 they, and, and they don't really bother to investigate. There is no condemnation, nothing. The shoulder of the priest and uh, the religious people doing the shenanigans. Well, it is as if it's just a part of the show of the night. Uh, it, is it liberality? Is it because you do not want to condemn your own countrymen? Or is it because you know, uh, the victims were uh, just natives? Never mind about them. We were considered natives. So and sometimes pictured as apes. Was that important for you that he was an American? Oh, oh I don't know. I, well, I, I, I brought it for the first time. Yeah, because you, I, I called the, all the bishops stupid. And they are really stupid, you know that. Because there is a book here which also ex, uh, exposes uh, their shenanigans, and their, uh, it's called Altar of Secrets. And may I have a copy? I'll give you one. Okay. It, so it was wrote by a narrator of uh, a, the bishops' conference. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Altar of Secrets. Mm -hmm. I'll give it to you. Read it and you will understand how it, how it, how the Thank you. Catholic Church has corrupted this country. Oh, by the way, I believe in God. I really believe in God. I put my destiny in the hands of God. But priests, 